Hello there. Hope everyone's keeping safe. Uh, today's topic of discussion will be Maya functional appliances. So it's going to be in two parts. So today we will cover part one. As for the learning outcome, uh, you should be in a position to define and describe the principles of functional appliances, classify various functional appliances, explain the mode of action of functional appliances. Uh, such as activator, bionator, and so on. So we shall start with the definition. So uh, it was Prophet who said, appliances which alter the posture of the mandible, holding it open or closed and forward or backward, are known as myofunctional appliances. Uh, however, Moyer said, uh, myofunctional appliances are loose, removable appliances designed to alter the neuromuscular environment of the orofacial region to improve occlusal development and or craniofacial skeletal growth. So uh, that gives you a brief idea of, of what we're going to discuss today. Uh, now coming to the classification of myofunctional appliances. There can be uh, several classifications. However, uh, I've just cut short and uh, given you just two classifications which are important and uh, easy for you to remember. One is uh, classified as fixed and removable uh, and the removable will be tooth borne or uh, tissue borne. Uh, the other classification is uh, passive tooth borne, active tooth borne and tissue borne. So what are the indications of my functional appliances? It can be used in class one skeletal open bite or deep bite cases. It can also be used in class two and class three skeletal malocclusion with either mandible or maxillary deficiency. It can be used in uh, growing patients. Uh, however, uh, you have to assess the growth spurt and uh, it has to be used in a pre-pubertal growth spurt age group. Uh, it needs uh, good compliance and cooperation from the side of the patient. So cooperative patients is another indication. Uh, also, there has to be a positive visualized treatment objective. There has to be well aligned lower incisors or mild crowding or proclination. In these cases, myofunctional appliances are indicated. How about the contraindications? If you see lower arch crowding or if there is presence of proclination, then it's contraindicated. It's also contraindicated in class two, uh, that is skeletal class two with maxillary prognathism, which is a negative VTO, non-growing individuals, excess of a lower anterior facial height, muscle disorders such as uh, uh, patients who are suffering from cerebral palsy, patients with ankylosed teeth. Again, as we discussed, these appliances will need a lot of compliance from the patients and cooperation. Patients who are uncooperative, uh, it is uh, not indicated in them. Uh, again, patients who are mentally challenged and who cannot have a control on their uh, emotions on the, or their bodily actions, you, it is uh, contraindicated. Now, coming to the mode of action, you have to understand myofunctional appliances exert orthopedic changes or orthopedic forces. So, you will see uh, changes to the skeletal structures. You will also notice changes happening in the dentoalveolar structures. Uh, and these changes can happen in the sagittal transverse or the vertical uh, dimension. You will also notice certain muscular changes. Um, and uh, the mode of action is basically through either uh, external forces or internal forces. How about the treatment principles of myofunctional appliances? So here you have to understand force application and force elimination. So force application, how does it work? So the compressive stress and strain uh, 
will act on the structures involved and will result in uh, primary alteration in the form uh, and also lead to a secondary adaptation in function. So basically, uh, because of the stress and strain uh, on the structures, there are changes which affect these structures and cause alteration in form leading to adaptation in function. So most of the fixed and removable functional appliances uh, work on this principle. So how does force elimination work? So elimination of abnormal and restrictive environmental influences on the dentition, allowing optimal development of structures. So if you eliminate abnormal and restrictive influences, it can lead to a optimal development. So the currently used appliances uh, utilize uh, one or more uh, of these uh, components uh, and these components are uh, bite planes, shields or screens and construction or working bite. So bite planes are basically used to modify eruption, shields or screens for lingofacial muscle balance and working bite for mandibular repositioning. What are some of the advantages of myofunctional appliances? These appliances can eliminate abnormal muscle function. Uh, as it is often uh, treated in the mixed dentition period, the treatment is usually started at an early age uh, and hence it can prevent psychological disturbances associated with uh, any kind of malocclusion. Also for the clinician, there is less chair side time and also you can reduce the frequency of patient visit uh, when compared to uh, having a fixed appliances and uh, they do not interfere with the oral hygiene maintenance as compared to the fixed appliances. And also more, uh, the functional appliances are usually worn during the night and thus the patient acceptance will be better or the compliance of the patient is on a higher side. However, there are certain limitations to myofunctional appliances. These cannot be used in adult patients or non-growing patients in whom the growth has ceased. They cannot be used to bring about uh, individual tooth movement. Uh, they require a fair amount of uh, compliance and hence uh, depends greatly on the amount of time uh, the patient wears these appliances and hence uh, indirectly affecting the, the success of the treatment. They might also require certain pre-functional orthodontic tooth movement for correction of uh, minor irregularities. So it might be two-stage treatment for that particular patient and also uh, the fixed appliance therapy may be again uh, required at the termination of the treatment for final detailing which cannot be achieved through myofunctional appliances. In that case what happens if a patient has already undergone pre-functional orthodontic tooth movement and then uh, he or she has uh, these appliances and then has to go through another uh, fixed appliance therapy at the finishing stage, it will be three states. So it will require a substantial amount of commitment and compliance from the patient. So all these have to be discussed uh, beforehand and uh, you have to uh, make the patient understand that these steps are essential. And only if you uh, see a positive compliance from the patient, then you may proceed. Otherwise, this will be a, a, a big limitation for using these appliances. So we will discuss the functional regulators. So it can be Frankel, it can be a vestibular appliance or an oral gymnastic appliance. We will also discuss about uh, the fixed appliances. So we will go into the details of all these, but in brief, and that is to limit the amount of uh, confusion it might create. However, I would encourage you to uh, read uh, the basics of each of these appliances so that you have a better understanding of how uh, the movement is affected by 
these appliances. So what are the different types of function regulator? So there are uh, five types, uh, but they are divided into many more. Uh, you will see FR1 being used for the correction of class 1 and class 2 division 1 malocclusion. 1A for uh, treating class 1 malocclusion where there is uh, minor to moderate crowding but uh, an associated deep bite. 1B is used for class 2 division 1 uh, wherein the overjet does not exceed 5 millimeters. 1C is indicated in class 2 division 1 where the overjet is more than 7 millimeters. FR2 is indicated for class 2 division 1 and 2 malocclusion types. 3 is used in class 3. 4 for open bite and bimaxillary protrusion. And 5 is used in patients with vertical maxillary excess. So knowing these types will help you understand where it is indicated and what kind of uh, forces or what kind of changes they bring in and uh, the kind of uh, uh, corrections you can expect uh, both in the skeletal and uh, dentoalveolar structures of the orofacial complex. So here we will go into a little more details of uh, what are the different components making up a function regulator. So we are not going into the details of each of the Frankel appliances we just uh, recently uh, talked about, but we will only speak about the basic components making up these appliances. So there are acrylic components, there are wire components. Uh, so you can find a palatal bow, you can find a labial bow, you can find cross over wire and uh, canine loop. You can also find buckle shield. You can find lip pads and also lingual shield. So these are some of the components which are a common factor in several of the appliances. Um, so these will comprise the basic components of these appliances. So once you have decided what uh, kind of uh, an appliance you will be using for a particular patient, uh, you have to understand that the treatment has different phases, uh, which are initial, active phase, and a retentive phase. So during the initial phase, you will introduce the patient to the appliance, and you will also guide the patient on how to use the appliance. And uh, you will also emphasize uh, on uh, performing uh, certain lip exercises, uh, which will uh, help in uh, the treatment success. You will also uh, tell the patient uh, about compliance, about uh, the duration of wear. So for the first week, you will expect the patient to wear it for a minimum of one to three hours in the afternoons, uh, uh, followed by four to six hours during the second week. And then on, uh, you will tell them to wear it full time. So that's the initial phase. Following this, you will recall the patient every four weeks or a monthly recall wherein you will check for any mucosal irritation, any impingement of uh, wires or uh, any uh, pressure or uh, sore points uh, on the gingiva and you will correct them and you can also perform certain uh, adjustments to the appliance. That is the active phase. And then uh, once you see the treatment progressing well, you can use it as uh, retainer uh, because uh, both the lingual and the labial wires will hold the altered tooth positions in their uh, new positions uh, and hence can help in uh, retention as well. Uh, also it can be used as a retainer uh, if you see unsatisfactory uh, training effect. Um, so it will be uh, two hours in the afternoon uh, or and uh, six hours in the night for the first six months and then uh, you will advise them to wear uh, the appliance uh, during the night time for the next one year. So that is the retentive phase. So far uh, I have told you about uh, 
what myofunctional appliances do, where are they indicated, what are the contraindications of them, what are the different types of myofunctional appliances, advantages, and also the disadvantages of using myofunctional appliances. You also know about uh, the mode of action and also the components making up a, fun a functional appliance. Uh, however, uh, we will discuss more about the removable tooth-borne appliances such as activator, bionator, and, and uh, others in the next uh, lecture. But for today, we will uh, continue uh, discussing a uh, few other uh, appliances. Uh, the first one will be oral screen. So, oral screen is nothing but an acrylic base plate which fits in the buccal or the labial vestibule of the mouth. It was Neville in 1912 who described uh, this particular appliance. And uh, uh, the appliance is indicated uh, for treating oral habits such as thumb sucking, mouth breathing, tongue thrusting, and uh, uh, lip biting. It is also used in the treatment of uh, mild profanation of maxillary anteriors. So how does an oral screen work? So if you're giving it to a patient who has an oral habit, it acts as a mechanical barrier between the teeth, lips, tongue, and thumb, thereby preventing the person or an individual uh, by performing the habit. Uh, if you're using it uh, to treat procline teeth, um, here uh, the forces which are generated in the perioral musculature are transmitted to the teeth and can help in the correction of procline teeth. And you can also use these as a muscle exerciser uh, if you come across patients with hypertonic perioral muscles. So here are uh, a few examples or I mean a few images of uh, an oral screen. So you can have several modifications for this. So the image on the left is uh, the conventional uh, oral screen. Uh, the image on the right with the holes in it is the one which is used for uh, mouth breathers. There's also uh, uh, an oral screen which is known as double oral screen and uh, the other modification is Hoth's modification. So these are some of the uh, types of uh, oral screen you might come across and each of them has uh, different indications as we discussed. The next appliance is a lip bumper. So lip bumper works by altering the equilibrium between cheeks, lips and tongue and by transmitting these forces from the perioral muscles to the molars. So a lip bumper has uh, two components. One is the removable component and the fixed component. The removable part is the stainless steel wire which runs in the lower vestibule from one molar to the other. And the fixed component is uh, the uh, molar band, which is cemented to two uh, molars. Uh, so uh, what are the uses of uh, a lip bumper? So it can be used in the treatment of uh, lip sucking or lip biting habit. It can be used as a molar anchorage. And it can also be used for uh, space gaining in the mandibular arch. So lip bumper can be uh, either uh, preformed or it can be customized for a particular uh, patient. Uh, and also uh, you will advise the patient to wear the lip bumper for uh, 24 hours a day and should only be removed uh, when performing oral hygiene or during meal times. The next appliance you see here is known as Herbst. Uh, it was Emil Herbst uh, somewhere in 1900s uh, who suggested uh, using a passive tube and a plunger system to move and correct uh, malocclusion. So that is what is known as a Herbst uh, myofunctional appliance. So what are the indications? So it is used to treat dental class 2 malocclusion. It can be used in deep white uh, with uh, retrocline mandibular anteriors. 
it can also be used in skeletal class 2 mandibular deficiency cases. Uh, these also have some contraindications such as dental and skeletal open bites and if you uh, see the presence of uh, root resorption or if you anticipate teeth to undergo root resorption uh, you will uh, differ using such appliances. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of using the herbs? So uh, the advantage would be uh, it is uh, possible to add uh, numerous modifications and uh, the disadvantage would be uh, the high cost of fabrication. Uh, the appliance can break easily and also uh, less patient acceptance and compliance. So here you see two images. One is the mandibular and the maxillary. So in the maxilla, uh, usually the appliance is uh, replaced by uh, using bands on the molars and the premolars. And also uh, the bands are uh, connected by copper lingual wire. Uh, however, for the mandible, you will see the, the bands on the first uh, molar and uh, the first premolar as well uh, and you will also see that these bands are uh, connected by a lower lingual arch wire so that's how you fabricate uh, the upper and the lower herbst appliance as the appliance has a tube and a plunger system so you have to determine the exact length of the tube uh, uh, by considering how much of uh, mandibular uh, anterior development you would like to see in that particular patient. So the tube is um, attached to the maxillary posterior root, whereas the plunger is uh, fixed anteriorly to the mandibular dentition. So um, the tube and the plunger system move when uh, during uh, opening and the closing movements affecting uh, certain changes in the tooth movement. So the last appliance we will be discussing today is Jasper Jumper. It is a heavy coil spring encased in a soft plastic that uses pivoting attachments at both ends uh, and they can be directly attached to auxiliary wires of a, a partial or fixed appliance which is already in place. So if you see the images on the right, that will give you an idea as to how these uh, uh, appliances are uh, attached and how do they look intraorally. So the image on the left is what is uh, the spring which is enclosed in a soft plastic. So they can be uh, attached to other auxiliary wires, so thereby affecting uh, class two um, Courses. Uh, and uh, what are the advantages of using this? So it is easy to insert or uh, activate this appliance and also it um, exerts uh, intrusive forces on both molars and uh, incisors which is a plus point. However, um, it is prone for uh, breakage and also there can be a lack of force when the mouth is slightly opened. Uh, which can be seen in uh, patients with uh, mouth breathing who habitually keep their mouth slightly open during sleep. So uh, the forces uh, which you expect to work might be greatly diminished during uh, certain periods uh, for that particular patient. So uh, that is Jasper Jumper for you. So with that, uh, we've come to the last slide of uh, today's uh, presentation. Uh, again, I'm keeping it uh, brief and short so that uh, it will not overwhelm you with a lot of information, but will help you with uh, recognizing uh, the different appliances and also understanding uh, uh, the indications and uh, uses of them. So we shall continue with um, My Functional Appliances Part 2 in the next lecture. Till then. Uh, take care and uh, thank you for listening.